Welcome to Monday Night Mayhem, brought to you from Grandma's Basement, a.k.a. the Veteran Radio Syndicate, with your hosts, Lunchbox and Judy. Sit back, relax, crack open a cold one, and enjoy our brand of stupidity. Wait, what? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6... What is up, everybody? Judy, what's up? What up? Happy Monday! (sighs) Dude, I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) I miss people. Right? I don't know what's up with the notifications, too. Like, I just got a couple on my phone, maybe like five, ten Uh, seconds before you said that. Facebook. I know what's wrong. What? Facebook is a whore. (laughs) Does it have the briars? Tuffy, what are you doing? What the? We're not even on the air two minutes, and this cat is causing problems already. Does it shock me? Um, Mine was in pre-show, but he's not down here anymore. He must have got fed. He's like, fuck that. I'm not going live. (laughs) Um, Yeah, right. He was like, I don't don't want to be on here. Get off my work desk, for fuck's sake. He's like, Tuffy scares me. Oh, a shit. Boot. I just realized I have. Ed. I have a. We're, we're going to introduce a, 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 a new co host today. You ready for this? We are. Well, I thought he was coming on at nine. No, no, no. Look it. <gasps> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Anyways. <laughs> Jeez Louise. So, anyways, happy yeah. happy Monday, everybody. Um, I quarantine week eleven. Right. Uh, brought to you from quarant- the VRS Quarantine Central, also known as Grandma's Basement. Um, yeah, how's everybody doing? Um, I'm pretty fucking bored. Well, actually, I've I've gotten a lot accomplished in my little house, my bunker, as I like to call it. Right. Um. But I'm lonely. Send nudes. No, don't send nudes. <laughs> Are you crazy? You can't. You can't start off the show. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I, I guess you can. Now you're gonna have people sharing the show. I'll be like, Judy's asking for nudes. So. Well, um, hey, ratings are ratings. Is, yeah, your inbox is gonna be flooded with. That's uh, eh, priority is. Ratings so. are ratings. Right. So uh, let's see who, who's in the audience. Dean Cerny's already bitching. If he didn't get a notification, he doesn't know what chat to be in. Facebook um, is being a little wonky. There's a new version of it. I don't know if you guys have switched over. Um, on that the a new bo- version on the desktop, which I switched over like a couple weeks ago. They asked me if I wanted to like, like post beta test it, and I was like, yeah, sure. Then I hated it, and I couldn't get back, and now it's uh, yeah. That's happened to me before on my cell phone actually. Um, yeah, there's a new update. I volunteered to beta test, too. and I'm like, um, <laughs> you're Abort, abort, eject, eject. How the fuck do I get out of this? Because beta testing means you get to find all the bugs. Right. So let's see. Who else is all in here? we got uh, Larry Krieger. Probably misspoke, like, misspoke that. Um, Bob Larry, Jordan. Bob Jordan. Bob, Jade. damn it. Jade Lopez. Whoop, whoop. What up, sister? John Bright. Yelling out, fucking America. <laughs> Oh, Josh Miller is here. Oh, Thanks for joining that, us. That cocksucker. Anyways, <laughs> I gotta figure. So when I do the show, it takes mm-hmm. me like ten minutes to figure out how to share to my own personal, like my own personal Facebook page because right. I'm the one that's doing it. What the fuck over? Oh my god, this cat. Go this and cat. go and go and handle your children. <laughs> I got oh, do you, have, you, have the, you have the you have the squirt bottle. I love it. That's what we oh, use. Oh yeah. Too. Always, and I have trigger discipline. Um, yeah, but we're we're broadcasting. Um, uh, let's see the um, the bar, VRS, the Monday Night Mayhem page, um, my gaming page, which is Lunchbox Lunacy. I've actually streamed from there a couple times this week. And I think in the mornings I'm just going to be streaming off of there. Um, let's see. Ashley Boom Butlers gave us two pages, too, that we're streaming off of. And we're also on Facebook right now, but not the VRS one. We have to get with our boss later 
um, as I could not figure out the login because I'm a grunt. What do you want? <laughs> I, ba- I mean, I barely can do this, so. I know, right? Did you have to take your shoes off to be able to accomplish this? I haven't put my shoes on in like two days, so there's that. I know, right? Like, I, I, I have to... <laughs> So I, I have to put the shoes show. on. Wow, are you feeling okay? Um, I don't know. I, a lot of things came off of me. I don't know. I start growing dreadlocks <laughs> in my beard. I mean, it's getting, it's getting bad. It's There's an ant farm in there somewhere. Dude, it's getting, it's getting so bad. So I, I have, to, I have a gravel shit. driveway, so I have to put shoes on to go outside to go check my mail and, you know, like, check the track. This cat's going to die tonight. Four years on the air, and tonight is your last night, bud. I mean, you're talking about ratings. That's going get a little weird. <sighs> Jesus Christ. So, uh, yeah, I go to put on shoes, and I'm like, where the fuck are all my shoes? Oh, they're where they belong, in the closet. <laughs> like, Usually there's a pair of shoes laying around conveniently that I'm like, oh, I could slip these on really quick. Not right now. By the way, Jack Jack shit in the uh, the Monday Night Mayhem chat said love to love to tune into something, and the first word I hear is the 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 f bomb. Um, the f bomb. Yeah, actually, we're we're trying to kind of clean up our act too a little we bit. We are. I said try trying. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drink to that. <laughs> Yes, because we here at VRS. Um, oh, let's see. Scott Penthony is the person I'm talking about. He's going to come on later, and he's going to be on here um, for about an hour. He's going to bring some uh, coronavirus conspiracy theories on. He wants he wants to be a co-host here at VRS, and that's. I mean, we're always looking for new talent. Um, we're looking for new shows. So if you want to get like, I don't mind having someone try out on our show. I mean, it can't they can't do any worse than me and Judy. I know, right? Kentucky. Like, really, you got nowhere to go but up from here. So that's why we have you guys on with us to right. get started to I pop mean, your cherry. Tuffy is, uh, <laughs> Tuffy's been trying to get his own show for a while, and he, yep. he, he keeps fucking up his tech. So. Yep. And apparently, if he, he apparently he thinks tonight if he can annoy the fuck out of mommy, maybe he'll get his own show. Right. Huh? Shithead. So how have you been? You heard about well a little bit about my week. How have you been? <laughs> Uh, pretty good. Is that a rubber chicken? Yeah, it is. Look at there he is. Wait, 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 wait. I've got something. <laughs> so, hey, I don't know if you've heard the news about um the COVID fifteen. Do you know what that is? COVID fifteen? Is that yes. um is that the new R. Kelly version or? <laughs> No, because then we wouldn't let uh, be allowed to let young girls listen to it. Mm. Um, too soon? Uh, so the COVID-15 is kind of like the freshman 15. Mm. You know, that 15 pounds you gain your first year of, of college, allegedly. Mine was... I didn't go to college until I was out. I, so, um... Yeah, same. Well, that's, that's, that's the rumor I've heard, you know. Barrack's life was whatever. Anyways, uh, so there's this COVID-15 that they're, you know, because we don't know how long this is going on. And a lot of people are very inactive when they used to have very active lives. So now health experts are saying that, um, you know, it's there's a lot of people stress eating uh, based on what's being purchased in grocery stores. There's a lot of unhealthy stress eating. So I am very happy about this. You guys know that. Um, I started running this again. Is going on now. I'm not going to be doing any marathons anytime soon because normally I only run when the cops are involved. But I'm training for a Tough Mudder in September, and I I have to pretend like it's actually going to happen and train for it. So I run on the weekends and I do um, hit workouts during the week. And Tuffy wait, helps me with those every wait, did once you say in a while. Hit workouts like you're hit. doing yes assassin Hi- hits. <laughs> That would be way more interesting than I what mean, I'm actually so doing. Unemployment's running rampant, so I mean, you got to do what you got. I mean, I know that you're. That I you're gotta help out the economy, man. But you might be like subsidizing your, like your whole income here. Like you might. Absolutely. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. 
absolutely. So uh, it's high intensity interval training is what HIT is. And basically it keeps you from getting bored because I have, I've been working out for a long time and it get, it does, if it gets boring after a while. Um, <clears throat> I put on a favorite pair of pants today and they're actually big. I was very excited about that. And I'm starting good. to get abs again. Now there's a little layer of fluff over the abs to keep them warm. You know, it is still a little chilly outside, but I was so happy that I put my pants on and they were a little bit big. I was like, yes, I'm not getting chonky <laughs> or chonkier. So I'm happy about that. Um, so since I've been missing people, my neighbor who lives right up there, literally above me, um, I sent her a text message on Friday and I'm like, hey, uh, wanted to know if you wanted to get together for a drink this weekend. I heard there's a really great bar at and I put our address on there and uh, on, on there's a fr great front porch bar at this address. And she's like, I heard that rumor, too. I'll be there at seven. <laughs> so we drank a couple too many shots of moonshine and a very strong gin tonic. Um and, yeah, we sat around and, you know, fostered a good friendship and solved the world's problems. Nice. That was pretty cool. So, yeah, and I went for a run Saturday, and then I did a bunch of shit around the house yesterday. To, and, I, you know, I'm just doing what I can to just occupy my mind. And There's a, there's a couple more people in the chat here. Uh, uh, Richie, the red the redneck pimp, is in there. And Steph Dobo, who... Is local to me. She lives in Western New York. She lives up in Buffalo, but she actually tours the country because being cold sucks. So, she, um, <laughs> Bob Jordan says he runs when there's ice cream involved. I see. I run at top speed at all times. So, um, if you actually see me running, it's bad. You probably should just yeah. Well, fuck out of dodge. No, I used to say all the time. I even said it to my commander once, which in the the unit that I worked in. My commanders were always lieutenant colonels, and when we when the Air Force started doing PT officially again, uh, he, you know, everybody was grumbling about it, and we were all, rah, 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 rah. and then I told the commander, I was like, "Sir, I only run when the cops are involved," and he looked at me and he's like, "Judy, you probably shouldn't be telling your commander that." <laughs> but so, I'm super happy about that. Did you catch WrestleMania last night? I did not, unfortunately. I was a little bit busy yesterday evening, like I said, trying to occupy this crazy brain of mine. But I got some highlights. Yeah, got some it's... debrief after, after action review from my brothers at VRS, and I read a little bit. Okay, this is how little sports news is happening. It's all over CNN's sports pages. <laughs> what? <laughs> WrestleMania? WrestleMania is awesome. never on. Nothing no. with wrestling is on CNN, but they got nothing else to report. So <laughs> that's how I managed to catch it all. So did you, I'm, I'm assuming you, you watched it. Yeah. And, um, I went, it was, so it was in two days. Uh, it was Saturday and Sunday and mm -hmm. I caught yes. most of Saturday and I think I watched almost all of it yesterday. It was, I mean, it was all right. Um, it was. It's weird because there's no crowd, and some of those wrestlers, like 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 Goldberg, he lost to uh, Braun Strowman. Oh, he's so and, delicious. Oh, and, I'm sorry. What? And and now we're gonna have a moment with Judy and Bill Goldberg. <laughs> now he he um, could be my resident spider killer. Right. He uh <laughs> he really plays off the off the uh, off the uh, crowd like he feeds off their energy and whatnot oh absolutely when there's no crowd you can't feed off that energy so it was like kind of it was, yeah because he really weird. needs his crowd to like yeah it's uh, he's, all, he's all about the badassery yeah um it was it was more produced i guess you could say like there was more um like the undertaker and aj styles match that was that was like a like an action film basically um <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's just it, it was it was okay. I mean, both both titles changed hand as far as the as, as the heavyweight championship belts. Um, yeah, Braun Strowman beat Goldberg, which was good. Braun Strowman is like he should have won that belt like two years ago. And then um, Drew McIntyre beat Brock Lesnar yesterday, 
and that was that wasn't bad. That wasn't a bad like beat. Um, it was like a convincing beat down. So I mean, it was good, <laughs> I guess. And Bob Jordan's right. Uh, AW is uh they have they have put out a better product, but they're not. I don't think they're currently doing anything because of the whole coronavirus shutdown. Like Vince McMahon refuses to shut down. Like their Monday Night Raw is on right now. Um, yes. He refuses to like shut down, and there's no audience, and I, it's for some of them it's hard. Like they did, they're they're really trying. Oh, and then Rob Gronkowski is like the fucking host of both nights, and he ends up winning the 24/7 championship belt, but it was just stupid. So, <laughs> and Scott Pentany just asked if Tuffy has a page now. Uh, it's, Tuffy's had a page. Welcome to the real world. Right. <laughs> Tuffy's always had a page. Tuffy's badass, yo. Right. I would I would say like I'm just looking in the audience here. I would say hi to Tuffy, but um, Tuffy's already graced us with his presence like seven times. Yeah. Uh, Michael Lane, what's up? Glad you joined us. Oh, hey. Nice. To, good to see you again. Oh, okay. Bob Bob Jordan said AW is doing the no audience thing too. Okay, cool. I didn't. Who I, was the one? I've been tuned in recently. Is it? Is it Bray Wyatt? Is he the one that has the entrance where he has to have cell phone lighting from the audience? Uh, he used to. He's he's now. Uh, I mean, he still goes by by Bray Wyatt, but he calls himself the uh, Fiend now. So he's yes. the Fiend, and I but mean, they, is his is his intro is his intro still the same? No, it's it's like a heavier version of what of what he was doing before. But I, okay. like when he was just Bray Wyatt, I loved his his. Uh, Entrance when he did it before with all the cell phones he was, lighting up. And mm, I loved to hate him when he first got started because, you know, he was that personality that we were all supposed to hate. And I yeah. fucking I could stand that motherfucker. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, like his entrance was just, it was so compelling. I couldn't help it. That's like uh, Chris Jericho in in uh, AEW. His entrance is his is his band Fozzy playing the music. The whole audience. Seems. I've always liked Chris Jericho's entries, yeah. even when he, we were supposed to hate him. I loved him. Yeah, so the whole audience will sing to his intro, and then when he when the when the song's done, he like then they then they all start booing him. It's it's the weirdest like paradox ever. So um, Bob Jordan says yeah. the Undertaker still has the best entrance, and yeah. I'm not going to argue with that. No, it's, the, I, so. Yeah. One of my one of my daughters actually, uh, Undertaker was her favorite. Is her favorite. Right. One, <laughs> The day that we took her to the hospital to have surgery to have her tonsils removed, she wore her Undertaker shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> and, but she can do the eye rolling thing like he has that that he can. That's not creepy as, at all. So to see the, your child do that. Yeah the uh, the uh, the WWE played a little um, thing at the end of that too at the, at the end of WrestleMania last night, and it's called the Undertaker the uh, Last Ride, and it was just a preview of it. And now there's a big big speculation that. Last night's match with a or two nights ago, I don't know whatever whenever he did the match, either Saturday or Sunday night. I think it was Saturday. Um, that was his last match. He did it with AJ Styles. So, um, Bob Jordan, I was I'm halfway through that. So there is a documentary um, called Dark Side of the Ring that they that they started last yes. year. Uh, they're on season two right now, and there is one with like with a Chris Benoit explores like basically his last couple years of his life. Um, it's really good. If you guys are into wrestling, check out, check out dark side of the ring. It is a lot of, um, it goes, it goes behind the scenes. It pull, pulls back the curtain of what really happens in wrestling. And it was really like, I'm, I think I made it through part one. There's a part two to it too. And, uh, yeah. it's got his kid on there. Like nobody really knows this, but Chris Benoit has another kid, um, from mm -hmm. a previous marriage. And that kid's trying to break into wrestling. He can't break into wrestling because of the stigma that involves his dad. Yeah. Um, basically killing his family, um, kill his, yeah, cause, uh, and then kill himself. So, I mean, yeah, because WWE wiped his existence off the face of the planet when that happened. Right. And not a lot of people will, like, even in other wrestling promotions, they won't even really say his name either. It's because, I mean, he killed his wife, his, 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 uh, yeah, he lost his like, shit. Three, four year old kid. And then he yeah. killed himself in the process. And so nobody, mm -hmm. like, nobody wants to touch that, which is, heartbreaking but as they're going through like the video and stuff like uh through the the whole spiel the whole documentary on him like they really get into like his concussions um 
when Eddie Guerrero died, I didn't, I didn't realize that they were, I, I knew that they were close, but I didn't realize they were like best friends and it fucked them up when, uh, when I, when Eddie Guerrero mm-hmm. died. So between mm-hmm. that, the concussions, all that shit, it just, his brain. And then he fucked. left. And then when Eddie died, he left Vicky alone and unattended by herself and God. Right. right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. So there's a, a show coming on to this new, a uh, newish network called Quibi. Have you heard about it? It's called Fight Like a Girl. It's um so what is this like the life and times of Mini Me from the bar? <laughs> <laughs> <Hi-o>. <laughs> so um oh actually <laughs> it sounds from the preview that I saw, it sounds like it's um <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. It's not the coronavirus. It sounds like it's, um, uh, I don't want to say weight loss. It sounds like it's kind of like Biggest Loser, except there's no assholes being coaches. Like it's all, it's all divas. It's all the, all the divas from WWE training with women who are trying to better themselves, lose weight, get in shape, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I don't know when it's going to start, but I really want to watch it. The bad thing is, is it's daily episodes and I'm like, fuck, how am I supposed to keep up with that? So hopefully they have like a highlight show once a week, but I think I'm going to watch that. I'm curious to see what happens I would love to do that. I would intentionally gain 50 pounds if I could just go work out with the divas for 60 or 90 days. That would be amazing. It'd probably be a lot of fun. Yeah, they'd be like, I'm sorry, Judy, you're not chonky enough. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> right. So how are the uh, – I know you, you work in the trucking industry. What? Uh, how is that? Is it still pretty hectic right now? For oh, you, it has some, suddenly become a seller's market. It is crazy fucking busy for us right now, and it's awesome. Um, I could barely keep up. Me and a couple of my coworkers – now, this, these are all senior recruiters who have been doing this for a long time. Um, I've been doing this seven years. Right. Um, I said today at the end of the day, I felt like I didn't get anything done today because it was just so busy. It's I could barely keep up. Like, my head was spinning. And I had seven browser tabs open in my applicant tracking system. And normally I have four. Right. Because I just, I couldn't keep up. And then every once in a while, I'd have to shut my phone off so I could take notes on all these browser tabs and then shut my phone or turn it back on. And yeah, it, we've been very busy. Um, so, more and more drivers are losing their jobs and mine are not. Um, so do you want to form a tag team with Jade Lopez? I absolutely do. She what wants to go with you. Do? What would we call ourselves? We need to come up with that something. All right, guys. So... Um... There's the next. There it is. The next the next WWE Diva Team. All right. The Tag Team Dream Team. Let's see some of your guys' uh, names. Remember, Jade, Jade is Army and Judy is Air Force. So, um, and I'm the Empress of Maine here on VRS. That's right. how they know me. I could right. just go by the Empress of Maine. It's true. Uh, although, what is, um, what is Jade the attack chipmunk or a check, attack squirrel? Let's just use that. No, she probably wouldn't like that, but something cool like that. So I don't know if Asuka would be, because um, she's called the Empress of Tomorrow. So I there's, see. there's her first feud to take away the Empress title. There we go. Yes. Although I, I wouldn't fuck with Asuka. I'd, I'd be very limited on what kind of you know throws and stuff that people could pull on me because right. I... I'm like Edge. Yeah. <laughs> I have very bad neck injuries. Yeah, if I were ever to wrestle like a, like in my younger years, I would probably be like a Mick Foley. I would just take hits like left and right and just jump off yeah. shit and just act stupid. I'd be like Mickey James. Right? Yeah, because she, you know, I always thought she's a great wrestler. She she loves to fly, um, but she had a, ter- a terrible attitude. Like, she was always such a badass. But she was one of the First, oh, I hate to say this because it's not the right term. One of the fluffier girls, not chunky. I mean, so, that actually got her in trouble. That's one of the reasons yeah. that she left WWE is because she gained too much weight. And now yeah. it's done a complete 180. You know, now we have a plus size diva who, oh my God, I wouldn't want to meet that woman in a lighted alley. No. She is huge. We have, we have, she scares me. 
there's actually a couple of them that are like that. But we have we have two names already in. Dean said uh, Julian the cricket in her pocket, and <laughs> Bob Jordan said the combat boot bitches. <laughs> That's right. Jade's the combat cricket. <laughs> but yeah, I I I would be a Mickey James type. I always loved her. I, I don't know why her attitude, even when we were supposed to hate her, I loved her. Right. You know, and she she moved around the different wrestling um, companies and I followed her everywhere. Was that... Uh, WC when she left WWE about a decade ago and went to WCW it, that was no she went to uh, TNA TNA that's right I was yeah. like wait a minute yeah and she had a lot she, of yeah. lot of lot of success in TNA too she did pretty yeah, good she there. did yeah yeah she did Mike Lane says not <gasps> even gonna suggest a name you big baby <laughs> so uh oh. So to tonight is actually a there there's I get this email every I get a couple emails in my inbox every single day um at my work email and s is the one of them is this I keep seeing this damn chicken flashing up on my screen. It's weird. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um but one of the emails that I get is one that tells me what the national day is coming up for tomorrow. So right. tonight is National Beer Eve. Oh. Because tomorrow is National Beer Day. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's good shit. Um, Scott, I've, I've drink the Scott snooty beer. I drink Rolsch from the Netherlands. Fuck you very much. Ooh. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Classic. Uh, Scott wants to know if you'll be wearing schoolgirl skirts to the ring. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, not. Is there not anything consume. else to wear when you're a diva? <laughs> right. I figured you guys would actually go down in like full old school BDUs and some uh, jungle oh, boots. Oh fuck yes! Old school BDUs, low cut in the waist. And like the the BDU, but a a top, but a you know the bra, Excellent just a BDU. Butler, what's bra. up? You know, and and of course it'll be like super glued to me. Same with Jade, you know. So wait, you gonna dip yourself in super glue before you go on, or? <laughs> no, you know how the the divas, all their skimpy outfits look like they're fucking glued to them. That'll be yep. All right. Hell yeah, we're wearing <laughs> old school BDUs. I love that. Somebody make that happen. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want that. Ashley Moon Butler says, hey, you sexy fuckers, cool cats and kittens. <laughs> I'm going to mess with my sound settings real quick. Right on. Just so I can see if I can make make myself any louder. Look at this shit. We can do shit in mid-show here. Bob Jordan says he's teaming with Dean Cerny, the Sasquatch and the Gremlin. <laughs> Give me sound options here. Um, yeah, there's something I can do about it right now. So, hey, I just want to let you know I was having some issues with my uh, my browser earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I drop out, I apologize. If I drop out of the show, <laughs> I'm rebooting. Reboot. Because this thing was locking up on me earlier, and it's all of a sudden it's acting like a whore again. You'll have that. Yep, and I don't want to reboot mid-show. Maybe. There's always that chance that maybe it doesn't work again. Right. It's true. I don't even. Hmm. So I hate how they've changed c control panel over the years. Oh, for your for your sound. Yeah. Your sound check. All right. Come on, Enough you of that bullshit. I just Not yell. Yet. I yell in the mic. <laughs> oh, is your mic weak? Again. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's it's coming a week again. I had it all tuned up before, but then like I up. Uh, like update shit it gets all screwed up and so, whatever oh wait hold on guys hang on bob jordan has a phone call uh oh everybody pause what you're doing <laughs> dean cerny says we need to reboot three's company actually you know what i would i wouldn't mind seeing that uh rebooted it would be all right <clears throat> 
So, what, uh, oh, look at that. One of the reasons I couldn't, oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about this. One of the reasons I didn't watch WWE mm. is because I went to log in, and it told me I could, I was locked out of my account, and I'm like, what the fuck? This was Saturday, right? Russians? What's Possibly. Russians? My Continue. fucking Continue. card got compromised. Your card did? Yes, my fucking debit card that was, ah. in, has all my auto pay on it. Urgh. Like, it was compromised or was caught con in a compromised position? <laughs> well, depends on how you look at it. Gotcha. Potato, potato, So, of course, potato. I had to call USAA. This is one of the reasons that I do, when I do my online shopping, um, most of my stuff is done through USAA because I've, knock on wood, I have found, I have several, been with several banks over the last, I don't know, 15 years. I've always been with USAA and had another one as a backup. Right. Uh, but their customer service when it comes to fraud is I, I've yet to found yet to find someone to beat them. Yeah. Um, I think it was three years ago now. I was um, traveling out to New Mexico mm -hmm. and my card, somebody used one of the uh, one of the RFID OAC one two scanner deals where you're like you're on a yeah. belt and they'll just yep the skimmers go, yep the skimmers good times and uh, by the time I got back home somebody ordered like a half a dozen orthopedic shoes which was weird <laughs> and um but as soon as it happened they did it in rapid fire and USA immediately <laughs> called me and were like that's yeah. fucking hilarious only yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was like, they're like, did you order this? I'm like, no. Did you order this? No. And the lady's like, do you even wear orthopedic shoes? I was like, no. She was like, yeah, these are for orthopedic shoes. And I'm like, right. Is this really insane? Like, I'm like, so I had my it? work credit card get compromised once. Mm. And you know how you find that out when you're on the road and you're at the fucking gas pump <laughs> and you can't pay for gas? I'm you like, fuck. no gas. And yeah, that kind of sucked, honestly, because, um, I, so I, I called my boss, his direct dial and he didn't answer. So I'm like, well, fuck, I need to, I need to get some money somehow. Cause I, at, at this point I'm like, I'm, refu I, I refuse to use my own personal money to do company travel. Right. I had no point, no choice at this point. It was either that or get stuck on the side of, you know, get stuck at the gas station. So I, um, I call my boss direct dial and he doesn't answer. I'm like, son of a bitch. And I need help now. Like there is no waiting around. Right. So I call the recruiting hotline and one of the senior recruiters answers. And I'm like, Hey, Mike, I don't need a job. Um, but I do need some money. And he's like, Judy, I go, yeah, I'm at the gas station trying to get gas, and um, my company credit card doesn't work anymore. Mm. So I got back into the office the next morning, and I logged into my statement. They had been trying to call me at a number that wasn't even my damn phone number. I don't even know how they got that. It was a, a phone number for my office, just not my number. Um to tell me that, you know, they've been trying to call me to tell you it was compromised, but this, I don't know who picked it up, but this number got started being used in Missouri and then made it into like Oklahoma and Texas. And I think it made it far as like Western New Mexico before the bank actually shut it off. Nice. Yeah. That was fun. <clears throat> Scott Penthony asks, did Pornhub have a data breach in your card? Pornhub does not have my card. Pornhub Premium is free, people. You don't have to give them a card. No, oh, people. Jeez Louise, man. Get up oh, get Lord. up with the times. What is wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, seriously. They're trying to flatten the curve. <laughs> <laughs> Stay home. <laughs> Stay home and uh, make a mess. Stay home and watch Pornhub. What the right. hell? Sounds like as good of a plan as any. Uh... So, uh, you want to get into some Kung Flu news? Send it. Oh. <laughs> wait, but we, but we can't cover conspiracy theories yet. We're gonna, oh, you we're know what? Let's wait Scott. until Scott, just before Scott comes on. I have some other stuff. Um, okay. I have some news that um, you guys might like to hear about. And 
And you guys can all roll your eyes at me. Because it's news that no one gives a fuck about. This is how desperate we are <clears throat> for entertainment. Oh, wait. Let me try this again. This is how desperate CRN CNN is to entertain you. The headline reads, While well, we've all been in isolation, Mariah Carey had a big birthday. Hashtag, no one cares. I didn't even know this she was still around. Prima Donna bitch declared herself as eternally 12 as she shared a, picture, a series of pictures of herself celebrating her birthday while social distancing among amid the coronavirus pandemic. Now, my favorite thing about her, I know, you know, Mariah Carey is hot from the neck down. She really needs to get that five head under control. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, she's with her kids wearing, I don't know, pretty inappropriate clothing to be around your children. <laughs> is, that a, is that a Nick Cannon's kids? Sure. I don't know. I don't keep up with her crotch yeah. fruit. No, it is. <laughs> that fucking poor bastard. I know, right? Oh, she just, oh, she makes although, me want to admit. Although he was, just, he deserves what he gets, so too, so. <laughs> Dean Cerny, everything dealing with Mariah Carey is big. She does have a nice rack and a large ass. Yeah. Bob Jordan, whatever age that note she hits is still annoying. Thank you. <laughs> really is. <laughs> that whistle tone. Oh my god, it makes me want to throat punch her every time I hear it. So, here's another one. Hmm. Just in case you needed the update and you didn't think it was quite over yet and you were horribly concerned, Prince Harry and Meghan officially start their non-royal life. Would they just fucking get on it already? I mean, Wait. how long does it officially take to be unofficial? Wait, we we reported this back in like the early part of February. So, um, what have they been doing <laughs> the whole time? I know, right? Like, how long does it take to denounce royal that you're royalty? There, did they did they still go to Canada? So apparently they're leaving Canada. Okay. I'm not really sure why, because I really, you know, I actually don't really give a shit. They were supposed to buy a house in Canada, and now I think they're moving to the U. I don't fucking know. I don't, it's funny because CNN's all, oh, why are they doing it? How will they survive? She had a little bit of money before she started dating him. Right. Just going to throw that out there. She was. Right. She didn't. She wasn't worth, poor. <laughs> yeah. That's how she was able to date him in the first place. Right. I just. Oh, it's so nausea. And of course, they're like, oh. You know, oh, throwing in the, the coronavirus bullshit in there, like, trying to loosely tie it together. And I'm like, God, these people. <laughs> Listen, this coronavirus shit needs to end because CNN is just screaming of desperation. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, there's, it, there's hardly anything going on other than this. And yes. God, you can't. There's so much, like, random shit that's going on, too. Especially here in fucking New York State. Like, uh, our, Col our governor, Cuomo, there, he's uh, he's leading the way in certain areas. And, uh... And, uh, I won't... But I won't ruin... I won't ruin that for Scott. Oh, um, right? <laughs> right? So, officially, the official word from, um, no longer... What... Would he be the... What would his title be? The uh, the the Brit formerly known as Prince. The Brit who took a shit on his <laughs> no, formerly known oh. as Prince. I mean, how yeah. many former princes do we have here? So former Prince Harry and Meghan, apparently they're just no longer allowed to use their titles. Blah blah blah. Right. They're still part of the royal family. Well, no shit. You kind of you know it's kind of hard to cut off the bloodline there. True. I just, how long are we going to stretch this out? <laughs> I, I want to know. I mean, I'm just, I think I'm more intrigued about how long this is taking for them to go away <laughs> than anything. Uh, Why is <laughs> Dean, Dean Cerny said New York is a damn epicenter of, of COVID-19. Look, New York City is, okay? I'm like eight yes. hours away from New York City. We had City. this discussion last week. <laughs> Glenn has this one state in Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, he was robbing the cradle. Oh, right. 
<laughs> oh, so if I were allowed to travel right now, I'd be in Wales. Did you hear about this? It, and it's a coastal town, so I'd be in heaven because, yeah, I'm a no, beach baby. I didn't hear about this. <clears throat> a coastal town in North Wales has found new meaning to the phrase herd immunity after goats were spotted roaming its quiet streets. It comes just days after British Prime Minister Boris Johnson introduced tighter restrictions around social movement in a bid to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Residents spotted herds of goats strolling around, I guess this is pronounced Len Lendundo, easy for me to say, on Friday and over the weekend after more than a dozen, of, a dozen animals ventured down <laughs> from the Great Ormy headland and roam the streets of the coastal town. Sure, why not? They're beautiful, by the way. They like they they really need to be petted and loved. Videos and pictures shared online show the goats grazing on grass from church grounds, flower beds, and residential properties. Uh, they are referred to as great Kashmiri goats, whose ancestors originated from northern India. Um, Town resident Carl Triggs was returning home after delivering personal protective equipment masks when he saw the goats. I'm going to post a link because this is I, it's it's actually a little unbelievable that there's just goats roaming this beautiful seaside town. They're just like, hey, we live here now and nobody's hey. got nobody can do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, did you? Yeah, I just. Dude, they're, they're really going in on Glenn tonight. It's bad. Oh, Dean Sarney. The reason the royal family is so fucked up is because Glenn Estes got high and banged Queen Elizabeth I. <laughs> His mom oh was God. Queen Victoria's great great grandmother. <laughs> so if you guys want to see some cute goats that need to be petted or shaved so that you can make clothing out of their fur. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, oh. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and break it down a little bit. Ooh. Get a, uh -oh. we're gonna slow it down a little bit. If we could just dim the lighting a little. Ah, oh, like you that. guys know that when we first, when Lunchbox and I first started this, we decided we never wanted, we don't really want to get political, but I can't help it this week. I really can't. So, I see on the news that Amazon has announced officially that you cannot get any sort of N95 or any other medical protective face mask from Amazon if you are not ordering it for like government use or hospital use. So you, I'm assuming you probably have to have some, uh, some sort of corporate account right? with prior clearance. So this announcement comes right around the same time that the CDC is like, Oh, did we guys tell you guys not to wear masks? What we meant to say is it's probably not a bad idea. You guys should wear masks when you're in public. <laughs> All the time. All the time. So don't touch your face. Wash your hands. Whoops, we fucked up. Sorry you can't get any masks anywhere. Go make your own. Fuck you. That's pretty much what just happened this last week. We absolutely got played by our own fucking government. And I do they the American public should be outraged at how this portion of all this played out. I understand there's the need to control the chaos. You know, they didn't want people to panic shop with masks and then, you know, one person has five hundred masks and the next person has none. I get that. But it pisses me off because people trust in our government officials to give us the right advice. And here's the CDC lying to us, basically. You know, if healthcare workers are wearing, the, when I broke my finger and I went to my doctor's office, so my doctor's office has an urgent care center. When I went to the urgent care center, 
everyone in there was wearing a mask. Even though I wasn't sick, the people that I saw all kept their masks on. Every single one of them. Oh, excuse you. Sorry, Tuffy. Coming through. <laughs> so, it's... I just... I don't know. It's a little insulting. People absolutely should be outraged how bad we got played over this whole mask thing. It's absolutely asinine. If you go on uh, Amazon right now and search for any of those types of masks, you you won't be able to order them. It's absolutely ridiculous. Right. <laughs> yeah, we you know, got... it's right. it's great that we can all make our own. That's great. All these websites are out there recommending how to make your own. But you know what? We should have all had an opportunity to buy our own instead of you know companies like Amazon fucking us over. Yeah, so, we got we got, go we got like like some of the local groups that formed up in our area that um people are making masks and whatnot. A lot of them were just handing them out. Why not? This one lady on there. She made a whole bunch of masks, and she's like, I'm selling them for $10 a piece. And everybody's like, literally the post above this says, no, just give us free masks, and you're trying to sell them for 10 bucks a piece. <laughs> right? Remember like, when all this first started happening? Before it was really serious here, and one of the, the stories I had was that dude that got arrested for selling the masks for like 20 bucks a piece. Yeah. Right up the road from the train station where government officials were handing them out for free. That was like India or some shit, wasn't it? Yeah, good times. So there are a lot of people saying here, you know, like, oh, Scott Penthony says he ordered two last night. So I have, since I have asthma, I already had masks on hand. And the reason I did is because uh, I think it was 2016, maybe. I think it was 2016. Half the fucking South was on fire. Uh, we had a really, really dry summer, and um, they had a lot of brush fires, and the air quality was so bad that they were telling anybody that had respiratory issues to basically don't go outside. Right. Well, I mean, if you just look at what's happening now, you know you can't you can't live like that. You have to go outside. You know, you have to check the mail. You know, if you live alone like I do, there are just things that you have to do for yourself. So you have to go outside. Right. So I had. So my uh, my battle buddy in Fort Hood sent me a medical grade reusable mask. Nice. Uh, that one stays in my purse at all times. And then I have N95 masks because anytime I work out in the yard. I have to, like, especially <laughs> when I tried to poke my eye out last summer, um, I had yeah, all the other PPE on. <laughs> right, I was going to say, where was, where was your uh, protection then, huh? Listen, I didn't think I was going to be popping myself in the face with a freshly trimmed branch, okay? I wasn't even supposed to be that into <laughs> my project. Like, it was an accident. Right. So. <sighs> I actually told when I saw the doctor when I tried to poke my eye out, I said, listen, I have a background in safety. <laughs> I have a lot of training classes and certifications, and um, I don't need the lecture about eye pro. Eye pro. I, <laughs> I know a, I'm supposed to be wearing it. <laughs> I have a lot of leather-bound books about safety. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> They're huge. So... But yeah, I, I when I was out there, of course I wore a face mask because I have asthma and pollen is everywhere all the time. So, yeah. but I have N95 masks. In fact, I wore one yesterday when I went grocery shopping, and people were looking at me like I was wearing three heads, and I just looked at them back like you're dumber, <laughs> you know. All right, I, I'm going to let's see. Although, I do have to tell you. There are some things, some pictures of people that I have seen in public that I'm just, no, I would rather not leave my house. I will die of starvation before I put a maxi pad over my fucking right? mouth. <laughs> I saw that. I w my wife's like, I think that's just, I, I don't think he has a sticky side in on the right spot. Like it should be right out of his mouth. Right. I'm like, <laughs> He wants to know how protective role play masks are. <coughs> what? No, I don't know. 
<laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, I have masks ready to go, and I'm, I'm happy that I do because I don't have to worry about people's cooties. Well, I do, but... Just so send a, just sending a quick message to Scott who I'm gonna bring in in just a second here. Bring him on in. Bring him on in. And when I bring him in, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick because um I was ill prepared for drinking beer on <laughs> usually usually I can make it like a whole broadcast without like pretty much as soon as soon as the broadcast is done. Yeah, it's oh yeah. I'm running to the bathroom. Yep. Lunchbox and I are like, hey, great show. We gotta get yeah. up and go. Good times, like, all right. See you next going week. Like this, going, Good talking to you. Right. We're both like, uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, I actually have some other kung flu stuff that is really funny, but I think I'm gonna wait until Scott joins us. <gasps> what are we? You know, I'm a, I'm glad there's at least stupid stuff happening around the world because if it wasn't for that, you and I wouldn't have a show. That's true. <laughs> Honestly, though, like I go on Facebook like every single day, and it's either so it's either the local groups are trying to find like, and there there's some really good like some really good stuff coming out. Of people are being really kind and nice to each other, and whatnot. And then there's other ones that have politicized this whole fucking thing. Oh my god! Basically, if I hear like, one more person blame Trump. Right. Well, they're either blaming Trump or like I, I live in the state that has Cuomo, so they're either blaming Cuomo. Oh yeah, it's totally um, his fault. It's totally yeah. his fault that we have a global economy and it's just spreading like wildfire. Right. This virus, you know. And then everybody is either a medical professional or they are political science major, or <laughs> they know how to like they're economists. They know how to fully get the stock market going like i've seen like every single previous it's so post. fucking nauseating look our our 401ks are all fucked for the foreseeable future there that is my financial in- analysis of what's going on right now okay i still have not logged into mine because i'm so fucking scared too and then you have the libertarians go on mm-hmm, see told you told you motherfuckers told you all about this shit <laughs> I'm a little too centrist for my own good, so I'm going, yeah, libertarians, yeah. <laughs> Basically a moderate, so I'm like right in the middle of everything that's going. Listen, Bob Jordan, I got to tell you guys, Bob says John Bright wears masks and leather on a daily basis. Oh, hold on, I got an alarm going off. Let me make that shut up. Shut up. Scott is Bob. getting his headset on. He's getting prepared. Sweet. John Bright wears masks and leather on a daily basis. Bob, we're going to ask you and John to keep your sexual preferences off this show. Please. I mean, <laughs> there could potentially be women and children listening. <laughs> no, nope, probably not. Well, I mean, this is family time for Dean, so um, he's got the whole family gathered say, in the garage. Don't worry about offending me. I'll be doing all the offending here. And Thank you very much. don't worry about offending Dean's family. Um, I'm, they live with Dean, so there's not a whole lot we right. can say that would, have, that would even come close to offending <laughs> them on a regular basis. And Mr. Terrell Dactyl would like to know if a ball gag would work as a mask. Um, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed. It doesn't cover the nostrils. It doesn't cover yeah, the nostrils. it doesn't. You're right. You're absolutely right. right. Sorry. Sorry, Terrell. All right. So I'm going to. That's horrifying, too. Oh, I'm going to have to go watch Pornhub to get that image out of my head. Don't mind the screen Christ, him quick, with people. a ball dub. I'm going to add ball Scott into here. Scott. Add. Minimize. There we go. Oh, I probably should see. Oh, and something happened here. Why am I losing video? All right, there we go. Don't lose video. Come on, Skype. Don't be a jerk. So far, so good. Let's see. Oh, we're calling him. It says he's unavailable. Shocker. Shocker. Man wants his freaking his time on the air. He wants to get a shot in this world. But you know what? Let's see. Did he message me? Can you reverse my image? I don't know. I don't think I can. I don't have that kind of pull. Dude, it's fucking Skype. It barely works on here. Put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Hold on. What do we got? <clears throat> I'm going to try again to bring Scott in. Add. 
you know, call. I miss my coworkers. Like, I actually like the people I work with most of the time. I mean, we get on each, on each other's nerves every now and then, but I miss my coworkers. All right, I merged Scott into the call. Sweet. All right, there he is. Let's get ready to rumble. Is this thing on? Yep, there he is. Speak. How's it going? Hey. He's got good his Good evening. COVID Thank you hat. so much for joining us. All right. And the tinfoil hat. All right. I'll be... <clears throat> and my son giving me a hug good night. All right. I'll be right back. I'm going to go and right um, um, get rid of beer, filtered beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what is your. COVID Cotex. Oh my fucking god, that is fantastic. That is <laughs> <coughs> that is not gonna last. No. Especially if it's a used one. No, no. The, the, the way she came into one, she was nice to me. <laughs> but it's just not it's not it, you probably okay. In all seriousness, I have seen people try to do this. I'm assuming that you probably can't breathe worth a fuck th- through those things. Oh, you cannot. Okay. Good to know. I love the tinfoil baseball hat, though. That it, You're totally rocking that. Well, that, I'm doing that to keep out the 5G that's weakening my immune system and making me susceptible <laughs> to the COVID. Oh, is that, what, is that what's happening? Yeah. And then I'm drinking my vaccine and 100 proof vodka. <clears throat> Outstanding. Well, my vaccine is Grosh this evening. <laughs> Cheers, by the way. <coughs> so, we brought Scott on tonight because um, we, y- you guys have heard us say if you want to do a show, contact us. Um, or if you want to be part of an existing show, we'd love to hear from you guys. So, Scott is here tonight. We're going to talk <coughs> about some Kung Flu conspiracy theories yeah give me a minute to look through these yeah go right ahead take your time so um and then when you're ready i I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself so our audience can you know do the um sound of music getting to know you (laughs) so when i hear lunchbox coming back wow he that was fast we better make sure he washed his hands. He didn't. Filthy bastard. <laughs> Hello? Um, okay, you came back way too fast. Did you wash your hands, you filthy bastard? No. <laughs> of course he didn't. <laughs> there you go, folks. Do as we say, not as he does. Right. Oh, what the fuck? I have my mask on. Oh my god. I am ready for any kind of coronavirus to come at me. <laughs> I heard a story similar this morning oh my god. on the radio. A guy in England was run home by the cops because he was out taking a walk. They told him to go home. Uh-huh. And they were sitting there watching his house, and he comes out twenty minutes later dressed up in a T Rex costume. Yes. That's awesome. <coughs> So they go up and try to talk to him, and he just growls and roars at them. Oh, my God. Because he can't talk because he's a T-Rex. So was it one of those, like, the T-Rex, the viral videos that we've seen on social media? Similar from what I understand. Like I said, it was a radio show. Okay. Uh, Local radio station every morning does a stupid news segment and that was this morning's oh my god i'm sorry i'm laughing at your story and lunchbox at the same time what because lunchbox is trying to put a feather boa on his mask at the same time it's on there (laughs) this is my show everybody (laughs) And we oh. love so much for it. Oh, my God. So, I really, like, <clears throat> this whole T-Rex thing, I am fascinated by 
Okay, let me try that again. I am obsessed with the T-Rex videos. I just can't get enough of them. T-Rex doing everything in life. Like, I just... They're awesome. And now our host with the weird head has a cat as well visiting him. Oh, God. All right, I'm out of that thing. Yeah, I got lucky. <laughs> like the dogs and the cats to bed with her. <laughs> All right. Whew, I could drink beer again. But yes, I'm I am obsessed with That's the T Rex videos. <clears throat> I think I actually would like to see that. So did you uh I don't know if you guys heard about you know coronavirus is everything everywhere. I think there's, you know, like a handful of countries that don't have it yet, but they're all like, you know, their population is four people. So <clears throat> Malaysia may <laughs> Made some lockdown tips for women, uh, thinking that they would make it easier on everybody. Whew. Oh, this is great. Malaysian authorities, this is according to gulfnews.com. Malaysian authorities have advised women to wear makeup, not to nag their husbands, and speak with a cartoon character's soothing voice during the virus lockdown. Sparking a flood of mockery online, like oh my many God, countries. Oh God, I'm going to Malaysia. <laughs> solid, <laughs> solid advice all around. Now listen, I <clears throat> not to nag their husbands. That is excellent, excellent advice. I don't know. Sometimes I'm too much of a man for my own good, ladies. If you're a nag, shut the fuck up. No one cares. So this article goes on to say, like many countries, the Southeast Asian nation has ordered all citizens to stay at home to stem the spread of the coronavirus, which has killed over 30,000 people globally. Now, this is last week, so obviously numbers have changed a bit. In a series of Facebook posts, the Malaysian Women's Ministry offered tips for how wives should behave during the lockdown. One showed a picture of a couple hanging up clothes together next to a caption that advised women to... Avoid bagging their <laughs> husbands <laughs> and to imitate the squeaky voice of Doraemon, I guess is how you would say that. A cartoon robot cat from Japan that is popular across Asia. Why not? Because that's not annoying to listen to at all, is it? Right. The post was removed Tuesday afternoon following a flood of criticism. You don't say. With many accusing the government of sexism. Other posts advise women working at home to wear makeup and dress neatly rather than in casual clothes. Uh, this must be a pressing issue, said one Facebook post. How will dressing up and putting on makeup at home prevent COVID-19, pray tell? Another says, it's already 2020. Please forget. <laughs> this is great. It's already 2020. Please progress. That so sounds like something I'd say. Focus on more important matters for women. There had been fears of a surge in domestic violence worldwide, blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. Uh, 1952 called, and they would like their values for women back. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We're bringing everything else back from the past. Oh, my God. I, I can't even... Olivia and Raul de Fritas checked into a luxury resort in Maldives to celebrate their honeymoon. But they haven't been able to check out because of airport and co coronavirus restrictions. Oh. These poor guys checked into a hotel. They can't fly back to their home country. So what's the over and under on them being divorced by the time this is all done? <laughs> Probably lower than the pregnancy over under. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Probably lower than whether or not she's pregnant. Oh, you mean like, uh, you mean all the babies that are going to be born in the next nine months or so that are going to be named either Corona or COVID? Yeah, or there's something in, there's something going around in the air, and I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of people's legs. <laughs> I don't know. I'll live alone. That doesn't sound like such a bad way to pass my pass my time. Right. If and I your had, hands chose it. Hey, if I, you know, if I had a resident spider killer... <laughs> You're taking applications? She is. I am. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and please send them into the um, the Monday Night Mayhem radio show page, <laughs> and we will review them on air. You send dick pics. <laughs> we're dressing them up, and we're putting them on the Monday Night Mayhem page. Mm -hmm. And we're calling you out. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
So I love this. You know, one of the things, and we even mentioned it tonight, you know, like if it weren't for this virus and the stupidity around this virus, we wouldn't have a show. Literally. But criminals have advanced. They've sort of um, changed their their habits to adjust to current times. So this is also according to golfnews.com. A London man was mugged for his toilet paper just moments after leaving a store as the Kung Flu pandemic has prompted widespread stockpiling in the British capital. A 56-year-old man was leaving a Savers store in Haringey, North London, on Saturday afternoon when someone ran up behind him and snatched one of the two toilet paper rolls he was carrying. I believe you get your ass beat for that in most places. Yeah. I saw an article about someone going into a store, coughing and spitting on the produce, and everybody beat his ass. Oh, we have a follow-up, by the way. Uh, So this this gentleman, who only went to the store to buy toilet paper, told the Daily Mail, I went to my local saver local savers and bought two packs of toilet paper rolls. Someone came up from behind me and stole one packet in broad daylight. What is this world coming to? Hmm. Stealing toilet paper. I mean, if you'd have told me 12 months ago, like if you'd have told me on April 6th of 2019 that toilet paper is going to be a valuable, valuable commodity 12 months from now, I'd have, I'd have left. But here we are. So um, the guy says he was shaken and shocked. Is this what we have come to? It's not the value of toilet paper. It's the principle. Absolutely. Kick that fucker's ass. <laughs> I'm concerned so, about the vulnerable people, the elderly, in terms of their health and their emotions. Has anybody bought stock in Charmin yet? Um, I'm thinking about it. Or or uh, Coke Industries, which is Georgia Pacific, and Georgia Pacific is paper products. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel bad for that guy that guy but you know what ain't nobody listen if somebody touched my toilet paper and you guys know my toilet paper woes <laughs> cuz I put them on Facebook ain't nobody touching my toilet paper I believe you may actually get drop kicked for that You need some send me an address my wife's been couponing for years <laughs> Nice awesome I actually managed to find some so I'm good for now I'm Did you dying. see New York City is wasting the coronavirus test that they say they can't get anymore Wait, on what? a tiger? New York City. They say they can't get the test. They can't get ventilators. They're using the test to test a tiger at the Bronx Zoo that developed a dry cough. Just to say, oh, our tiger got it too. Hmm. So... <sighs> The coronavirus is not a new virus. The strain of it is this strain because I have a cat who has, in fact, it's Tuffy. Um, he just went to the vet last week because he gives, he has. Um, Tuffy's got the Rona. No. <laughs> right. But there are viruses that cats get that are congenital. Um, and one of them is a, is a strain of Corona. So, and it's, it's common in cats, even large game cats. Like tigers? It's common. And they get goop, they get upper respiratory infections. Um, Tuffy was pretty grody last week. Mm. He sneezed and I was like, oh, kitty. And he needed a tissue. I was like, oh, that's disgusting. We're going to the vet. Uh, that's very interesting that they would do that. Just, I mean, I guess... I could see if, you know, how do I say this? You should test that cat to make sure it, it doesn't have it so that it could be quarantined. Because, you don't, God, it doesn't matter who's spreading it. You don't want beings spreading the virus, right? Right. The zoo's closed. Who's going to catch it from the cat? Well, maybe the cat would sneeze and spread it to other cats. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. You know, one thing about the uh, the whole toilet paper thing, that poor guy getting ripped off, you know, getting his toilet paper stolen. It's good to see we're not alone in our toilet paper strife. <laughs> like it's happening 
not just in Australia as well as UK. Apparently, it's a worldwide epidemic. I have no idea why everybody is hoarding fucking toilet paper. Because <sighs> they're stupid. I wonder if Carol fucking Baskins is hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> She hides it all with her husband. Oh. I still haven't seen that fucking show. You haven't? I have, oh, God. No. You have to. I, I, so I fucking... have not been able to get myself to watch it. I so I want to watch it so bad, but every once in a while I'm like, oh, I should go check it out. And then, uh, and then I see something, uh, some sort of comment or something like that where I'm like, this is why I'm not watching it. Like... One of my friends that I, one of the guys that I serve with, um, and actually he and I love to play practical jokes on each other when we serve together. Um, he posted tagging his friend and he's like, why the fuck did you <laughs> tell me to watch this fucking horse shit? This is, he's like, I get dumber by the minute and all this other shit. <laughs> this is why I'm, and I'm like, this is why I'm not watching it. Right. Well, that's one of your Florida guys. You got a point there. Speaking of which, I was watching a YouTube video. Uh, the guy's channel is Brandon Herrera, the AT AK guy. Doing gun meme reviews, and he had one that he, he just straight up blamed on the Florida guy. It was an AR-15 where somebody replaced the handle with a deer hoof. And he's like, Florida guy, just please stop. <laughs> I oh, can't yeah. even. Wow. So, but yeah, so if you guys, other, if you guys need a funny you YouTube got? channel, uh, it's uh, Brandon Herrera or the AK guy. Look him up. He's hilarious. So, what's going on with these five uh, G cell towers that are? Oh um, yeah, do that, tell. That cause okay. the coronavirus. Okay. The the rumor in England and Europe is. That uh, the five G cell towers are lowering people's immune systems and making them susceptible to the coronavirus. Oh my god! And since five G is primarily being pushed out of China, it's all a China conspiracy. Okay. Well, of course it is. Yeah, of course. China. 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 So blue. I the blue came from China. Why would we change? Change the name. It came from China. That's the way we do it. I have my own conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah? Actually, I have. I have okay, two. go ahead. The first one, um, this is actually, it's pretty viable because I thought it up all by myself um, when I was talking with a friend over the weekend. So I'm pretty sure the Chinese started the Kung Flu as, to as a way to stop all the rioting in Hong Kong. Because when's the last time you heard about any of the rioting that was there? Yep. They're I've not allowed to riot too. anymore. Problem solved, right? You anti-government fascists. You're all at home now, aren't you, bitches? No, they're just getting no less press. <laughs> I was like, well, that is a, a good way to end... <laughs> <laughs> end a protest that your government isn't happy about. We're going to release this really deadly virus. Who gives a fuck about the rest of the world? Right. They call that collateral, collateral damage in war. <laughs> All right. Now, so what other crazy conspiracies do we got? Yeah, go ahead, Scott. You got any, um, What else you got that's good? Give me a minute here. Everything I'm finding kind of points back to that or the Chinese lab. And everybody's heard all the ones about the Chinese lab so far. Uh, there is evidence. I'm not going to say how credible or not it is <laughs> that they were selling the animals from the lab to the local wet market where they believe it started. Hence it coming up in bat soup. And also ads were posted by the lab looking for people with specialization in bats and certain virus research. Uh, I've gotten them from a couple of different places. None of them all that credible. <laughs> and if I go too deep down that rabbit hole, I might get lost because they're kind of fucking interesting. I... <laughs> 
Well, you heard my my theory. I mean, I'm not credible at all. <laughs> the Monday Night Rayham radio show is not a credible source. Yeah, but I you're know. cute. You're talking about Catholic school and the skirt. Oh, you got a point there. <laughs> you could get away with a lot. You got a point there. And some and people hey, will believe anything if if the if the message sender is saying it confidently enough. Judy, I sent you a picture of me in plaid. It's your turn. You got a point there. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Well, there might be that one time. Never mind. At band camp? <laughs> What's going on? What do you feel up to? I'm going to say you're eating popcorn. <laughs> eating popcorn, enjoying the show. I'm drinking beer. What are you two plotting over there? Oh, I'm drinking beer as well. <laughs> We're talking about sharing each other, sharing pictures of me and Scott sharing pictures of each other in plaid skirts. That's how it starts. It's a gateway drug. <laughs> oh my God, I can't even. For those of you who don't know what's going on, uh, I'm a scout master. I sent Judy a picture of me teaching a scout class to future scout leaders wearing my plaid kilt. He did. He absolutely did. I will get it to Josh, and he can put it up whenever he wants on next week's show. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. All right, my computer's getting a little slow on me. Hold on, let me close a few things out here. And I just want to sc- see a school age Judy in a skirt. Oh, uh, that's awkward and creepy. <laughs> oh, I can get creepier. I got a leather no, fly we're spotter, good. a six-inch... <laughs> Six foot bullwhip. You should see what I can do with leather, lace, whipped cream, and a small pony. All right, Aren't so, you married? <laughs> yeah. We need. Sorry. So now we we need to have a show with Scott and the compound commander. And just oh my them, god! Yes. Let them just get super creepy. It's all downhill from here. Yeah. My beers. Although I don't know, <laughs> if, like we, I'd have to teach Scott how to how to run tech because Chris is internet like. Literally drops. Oh my god! Chris's like, internet, like, yeah. oh. is or that shit dial up or remote. what? <laughs> Dean Cerny says Monday Night Mayhem needs a shirt that says "Don't eat stupid shit." Well, that means half the half of our audience can't listen. All the Marines can't listen anymore. It's true. <laughs> <clears throat> So Scott, do you have any other uh, interesting conspiracy th- conspiracy theories? Woo! No, the big Play ones I'm seeing are the five G towers, the bat soup, which I'm still trying to figure out how some people eat bat soup. Now, bear in mind, being in the Navy, when we would hit port, I would take a cab at least a mile away from where we got off boat, ask the cabbie for a restaurant he likes to eat at. I don't want a menu. I just look around, I point at something and say, bring me that. And I make Sounds up my like mind be drunk. before <laughs> I decide what was – before I make up my mind if I like it before I hear what's in it. One of the best things I had was curried cow brains over rice. Yeah, I'm still not doing bat soup. I know, right? Like – I was I was like you, Scott, when I was active duty. I was a very adventurous eater, um, you know – uh, my my thought is, you know, you only have to, you know, if you don't like it, you never have to eat it again. But I do draw the line. There, There is definitely, you know, I don't know. I've had some great food and I've had some other food that I'm like, yep, tried it, won't eat it again. Yeah, like um, I said, a lot of the stuff. And I've had Rocky Mountain oysters. If I knew what was in it, I would not have eaten it. <laughs> but I ate it. I liked it. Then I asked what's in it. And the oysters are not bad, Judy. I know they're they're not. Once you know what they are, I got I I was told to eat them before I knew what they were, and after I got told, I was like, "Well, I guess I'll never be eating that again." Right. <laughs> I mean, really, I've eaten dog, cat, horse. Oh my god, horse is fucking good. Uh, uh was, anybody who's eaten at McDonald's has had that. <laughs> there was a restaurant in Naples, Italy. That served any kind of meat that you could imagine other mm-hmm. than people. If they did not have it in-house, they would have it in in a week. Wow. So you look through their menu, you pick something, and they'll have it for you. 
and I, like I said, I was very adventurous. I didn't give a shit. Uh, I like liver. Can't eat it. Uh, apparently, I'm allergic to it. I eat it. Love it. What? Ten minutes later, I'll paint a wall ten feet away. Ooh, like what color? Really? That talking? sounds like me and Jeremiah Weed. Ooh, Jeremiah Weed. Ooh. Yes, that is a uh, that is a Ooh. military aviation drink of it's a specialty drink um so navy and air force aviation specialize in mass consumption i think the only reason jeremiah weed is still around is because of the navy and air force aviation community no my my dad helped with that too when he was alive that was that was his <laughs> that was his drink right there i remember going down, so he had he used to have a music studio in the basement and uh oh. whenever i would stop by to like help 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 them out with something I'd hear him playing down there with some of his friends. I'd walk in, and he'd just pass me the bottle of Jeremiah weed, and I'm like, oh, God. This is going to hurt. Yeah. I'm like, I'll, I'll, like, I'll just take a I shot. I drink whiskey straight, and I don't cringe. Jeremiah weed, I get shivers just saying that name. The <laughs> only one that does that to me is Dick Trickle Whiskey. It's Dick Trickle. Who the fuck decided to name him Dick Trickle? Seriously. I don't know, but that shit is nasty. But, you know, I... I don't know if you know this, and maybe, you know, Lunchbox, since we, we are on conspiracy theories tonight, we should look at the possibility that Jeremiah Weed may c- cure the coronavirus. But then, That's got to be the alcohol percentage that would kill any sort of germ. Have you seen Range 15? They cured the zombie virus with whiskey and I saw that shit in semen. theater. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do that in theaters around here. So no, we don't we don't get any like side B roll fucking movie in, in our theaters ever. Oh B roll, that was a fucking great movie. That was, it was fantastic. In fact, I might have to put that on my watch list for yep. my quarantine it list. It's on Amazon Prime. It is, if it absolutely is. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Black Rifle send us some coffee. So um you know, going back to Jeremiah Weed, you know how Cigarette packs have those health warnings on the side of them about it causes cancer and lung problems and birth defects in babies and blah, blah, blah. It makes everybody Jeremiah, think I have the corona, coronavirus. Jeremiah Weed needs to put on the side of their bottles that it causes projectile vomiting. <laughs> um, Dee's already just mentioned old granddad, too. Um, when I was Old granddad's, granddad's oh, not a bad whiskey. Got it. No, I so I drink when uh I was out for for my bachelor party. Um, I had a I had a good 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 brother of mine who came all the way over from Albany, which is about six seven hours away. Um, mm-hmm. he was he was one of the groomsmen and whatnot. And when we went out, he's like, "You just pick one shot, and I'll give you that shot all night long, and we'll you know that's oh, that's good. that's what you're gonna drink." And I said, "I don't give a fuck, man. Just pick whatever. It's gonna be a shit show anyway. It's you're gonna." You guys are end up <laughs> trying to fucking kill me anyway, so. Right. And he goes, okay. He just walks in the bar and goes, give me a shot of old granddad. I was like, fuck. And fuck. I, that, that's what I did all night long. I wasn't allowed, I was allowed to drink beer, but old granddad was the only liquor I was allowed to drink all night. And I thought I was going to die like the next day. I'm like, fuck, fuck. Old, like, I'll never drink oh, a shot I'm of old sure. granddad ever again. Oh, my God. My sister's wedding had an open bar. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. At an open bar, my sister and her husband both tipped the bartender $100 bills, pointed at me, and said, drown him. At the time, I was drinking 101 and Coke. Good old wild turkey. In my dress white. I had an incident with that as well. In my dress white, and by the end of the night, there's video of me playing drums with the band. Like, effectively, or... Yes, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just making sure. And then there was video later on, after a few more drinks, of me playing a blow-up guitar, not so effectively, and a harmonica, not too terribly. So I, I think we might be onto something here. The VRS cure for coronavirus might actually be Jeremiah Alcohol. Wade. Yeah. It's it's pretty terrible. So I found another article that 
because you know this is happening around the world and not a whole shit ton is happening just in the u.s other than the virus what's on the news the virus that's what's happening um so i found this um from fox news it is absolutely i don't know i find it rather comical an astrophysicist in Australia, went to the hospital last week (laughs) after getting magnets stuck up his nose while attempting to invent a device to stop people from touching their faces amid the global kung flu pandemic, according to a report. Was he planning on using similarly charged magnets to repel your hand? I don't know. Dr. Daniel Reardon is a 27-year-old astrophysicist and research fellow at Melbourne University who studies pulsars and gravitational waves. He and his partner were working to create a necklace that sounds an alarm when someone tries to touch their face. There you go. They nice. began by wearing magnets on their wrists, but then Reardon tried, <laughs> tried putting magnets in his nose. It's the same logic as clipping pegs to your ears. I clipped them to my earlobes, then clipped them to my nostril, and things went downhill pretty quickly when I clipped magnets to my other nostril. <sighs> so yeah, you we... put the magnets too close together, and I'm guessing what happened was they didn't repel each other. So we're going to mag- need some clarification on this. Uh, we need Bill Gammon in here. We need our <laughs> resident Aussie to... Uh... We absolutely need Bill Gammon. Because this is like science that right now. We get, we gotta, yeah, we have to we have to check in with our with our chief science officer of Australia. <laughs> a magnet on each side of his septum attracted together, leaving both stuck inside his nose. How fucking strong were these magnets and what size were they? Reardon said he Googled a solution and after reading an article about an eleven year old who also got magnets stuck in his nose, he tried using other magnets to wow. pull them out. An 11-year-old, an astrophysicist, <coughs> 11 years of college education, Could took you, the advice of 11-year-old. So you don't, you, you don't have it. He's just sitting there like, oh, my God, I got this idea. I'm going to fucking do it. And he got halfway into it and went, fuck, God damn it. What the fuck do I do? He's just fucking YouTube and whatever he can. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This article is fantastic. As I was pulling down, I'm so glad I didn't read the whole article before just now. That way you guys can get my genuine reaction. As I was pulling downwards to try to remove the magnets, they clipped onto each other and I lost my grip. (laughs) And those two magnets ended up in my left nostril while the other one was in my right. At this point, I ran out of magnets. Well, thank God. How many were you going to fucking put up there? Right. Like, what what was he doing? He's just looking around at the table like, shit, I'm out of magnets. What the fuck do I do? Now what do Uh, I do? I don't have any more magnets. What fuck? He says, uh, once out of magnets, Reardon tried using metal pliers to pull them out. Now I'm Ow. having <laughs> There's a Ow. lot of tears going into this. What was <laughs> Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Does yeah. anybody else have pains? <laughs> yes. And he pulled that tracking device out of his nose. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, So he tried using the metal pliers to pull them out, but those two became magnetized. Oh my God, dude, give it up. His research partner finally brought him to the hospital. Could you imagine what that looked like, him walking into the hospital? Uh, Medical staff applied an anesthetic spray and manually removed the magnets from his nose. Yes. My partner took me to the hospital that she works in because she wanted all her colleagues to laugh at me. You know what? Sorry, buddy. You had the one coming. Wait, the doctor thought name? it was quite uh, Reardon. Oh, I just wanted to see if it was an Italian name because, man, it's got, it's got to be some big fucking nostrils. <laughs> or Dean Cerny. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Reardon. Hmm. Um, you know, and this just goes to prove it doesn't matter how college educated you are, you are when you're in your 20s, you're still fucking stupid. Right. Um, so... He said the doctors thought it was quite funny making comments like this is an injury due to self-isolation and boredom. Absolutely. Not someone that's an astrophysicist for fuck's sake. Um, 
Um, so, so, so Terrell said a sixth grade education is good enough to be an Aussie scientist. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know about you guys. But I put, you know, most people stop putting shit up their nose after they turn like six or seven. Yeah, I don't even like doing like a nose spray when I have a like a, like a cold or anything like that. I oh, that's even... that's it. That's the only time. Now I do have a nose piercing on the side that I forgot to wear it wear tonight. Um, but other than that, foreign objects do not go in there. Like, uh, I, I love this girl to death, Christina Hunter, Christina Davis Hunter. Is a um, she is my battle buddy in Texas. She comes in every once in a while to the show when she's not working. Um, but she's an ER technician, so she's posting, you know, like all kinds of information to educate us people who are not as intelligent about this whole virus. Right. And she posted an article that shows how they test for the to see if you have the coronavirus. Let me just say this. If you are in doubt as to whether or not you have the coronavirus, you don't, you know, if you're like, oh, let me just see what this is like, don't do it. It is horrible. So, you know, that test you get when they, they, they think you have strep throat and they stick that fucking long ass swab in the back of your throat and you're all, <coughs> uh. They take one of those and they put it in your nose and they get in the back behind your nose to test it. It goes My up God. through your Do you nose know where the Navy puts those when you're in a port? What'd you say, Scott? Do you know where the Navy puts those when you come back from a port call and you have a little bit of itching down there? Uh, <sighs> this went it's really It's called astray. scream and scream for a reason. <laughs> That's what condoms are for, Scott. Oh my God, Josh's <laughs> face right now. <laughs> Who's? Oh. <laughs> so. You just reminded me of something. Oh. When I was. Oh my God. This shows you how old of a, of a veteran I am. I went to Panama. When I was in Panama, um, I worked staff, so I worked manned the radios to Very where the working staff and Air Force on top of it. No, no, no. So I we manned the radios um, when that, whenever there was an AWACS airborne, we had to do radio <gasps> relay, um, and we were in the ops room. So basically, we were just sitting there all day long, just listening to what AWACS was doing, wishing we were on it instead of sitting in a fucking office in lockdown. Um. But we also had to welcome the new crews that came in. And, you know, in Panama, the hookers are like palm trees. They're everywhere. And so everybody has, I mean, condoms are everywhere. It's, it's like bottles of water. They're fucking everywhere. Well, there was rumor that one of our um, captains who was single and kind of a weird guy got an std on his face because <laughs> you gotta love a hooker to go down on her <laughs> that's, a whole that is like, that's like next level like, <laughs> like he was about to make that a dependent right there right. that's that's like he's bringing that yeah wow so Whenever it was my Ow. unit's turn to get that rotation, you know, sometimes you would go more than once. And he, the second time he went, I was on staff and in the briefing room where we would do the in briefing for the new crew that just landed, we always had a huge fucking box, open box of condoms just sitting there on the table. Like, may I help you? You know, here, have a candy bar and have a condom. What the fuck? Well, when this guy was coming back, redeploying into Panama, we put a box of saran wrap with his name on it next to the bag of co the box of condoms. <laughs> yep, I'm going straight to hell. This is why I have the fucked up sense of humor that I do. So, uh, same guy that I mentioned earlier about the old about the old granddad. Um, 
when we were stationed over in Germany. He uh, he got routed off the range twice in one week. Not only did he like on Monday morning he showed up for for PT and then went went to sick call, got routed off the range because uh, he uh, slept with some girl over the weekend and uh, things started happening. And by <laughs> Wednesday, the dick. yeah, by Wednesday or Thursday. He had something else totally going on. Same girl, because got run off the range. Doctor said, like, you got, it's, it's bad, it's not good. Like, he was like, well, I already got it. So, like, Tuesday night, he went <laughs> right back He's in. He's got a point there. That's he some serious right optimism. In. Nobody likes a quitter. He went right back in, got run off the range Friday morning. I'm like, dude, you started your week off by getting run off, and then Friday you go do it again. Like, that's how you start and end your week? <sighs> I don't even know. <laughs> Cheap thrills, how man. Cheap thrills. go from coronavirus to STDs? Where did we, where did we go wrong? <laughs> Wasn't so cheap what you filed for half. Oh, my God. Potato, I can't tomato? Even... I don't know. <clears throat> okay. We're going to go before my asthma makes me have to log off for the night. <clears throat> We're going back to the Rona, to the Kung Flu. The Kung Flu. To the Italy. The China virus. The China virus. I'm calling it the Kung Flu. That's the official name of VRS. <laughs> We're going. We're moving to Italy. Well, not right now, literally. No, we're not going anywhere near that place. Oh, but God, show- no, I was stationed there, and I feel so bad for the other people sta- stationed in Italy right now with the news I'm seeing from there. My God, it's horrible. Pity them motherfuckers. Yeah. So the coronavirus in Italy, this this is from Fox News. Some of the most surprising excuses people have had have used to leave home. Despite tough restrictions imposed by the government in an effort to contain the Kung flu pandemic that has ravaged Italy, some people there have been finding ways to venture outside. Under Italy's quarantine rules, anyone who wants to leave their home must fill out a form stating the reason for being outside and must submit it to law enforcement when asked. Under a government decree, people may may leave home to buy groceries, work, and walk their dog among a limited set of activities. I'm laughing because I've already read this article and I know where this is going. Um. The virus has sickened an estimated 101,000 plus. Hold on, Judy. I'm calling bullshit. Italians do not walk their dogs. They turn them out loose. If it comes back, it comes back. If not, <laughs> they get whatever's new. They I get caught new so they many get motherfucking dogs when I was in Naples that they would drop off outside base housing base. Oh, my fucking God. The Italians do not give a shit about their pets. They just <laughs> turn them loose and expect the Americans to take care of them. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> if it, this keeps going, I will make bulldog fucking blush. <laughs> so the first reason is love. Fuck it. You fool. Really? One one man from Acilia, just south of Rome, said he was trying to win back an ex-fiance who broke off their relationship a few hours. He just wrote love on his form. That's it. <laughs> and the po- and the police were probably like, denied, fool. Uh, gatherings. A man in his 20s wrote on his form that he was going to a friend's home to have a dinner. A clear violation of the government's policy on gatherings. Uh, th- we're calling this guy hashtag zero fucks given. Right. Meanwhile, two women lied and said they were visiting an elderly and sick aunt. After some digging by by police, the aunt turned out to be a healthy 40-year-old woman. Smoking habits. One man traveling from from Formello to Rome, a 30-mile drive south, said he was going to buy cigarettes. Well, maybe they were out of his favorite brand at his store. Shopping. Two men declared they were going shopping only for police to find... (laughs) That they were selling drugs instead. That is shopping, technically. I mean, it is, yeah. You know, someone is shopping for the goods that they are producing. On the cigarette one, he was in Rome. There's a huge black market of American cigarettes there from the base. Is. 
yes. from the base that would be about halfway down to the Naples base, he may have been just going for a hookup. Well, would we put that in the love cal- category or? No, a, a cigarette hookup. Ah, <laughs> uh, wine. Now, listen, this is a legit, I, I would call this a legit reason. In Northern, Italy, in, in Northern Italy's Padua, a man whom police stopped said he was under the impression that wine was considered a necessity and was looking to purchase purchase a bottle. It fucking absolutely is. Yeah. I mean, in our Italy, liquor stores, yes, it absolutely is. Our the liquor civilian stores are contractors still open. we had on base. Ours are too. This is, the civilians we had on base from Italy were allowed two drinks a day, not to exceed uh, American drunk driving levels with lunch. Yes, wine was absolutely a necessity there. Absolutely. It keeps people from riding. It's the one, you know, and, and you have to be really careful if you're going to drink during this because alcohol is a depressant. And good Lord, no, nobody has the coping skills to deal with this shit. Eventually, some of us are going to start cracking. Fuck you. I'm drinking 100 proof vodka. <laughs> but, you know, we probably all should not turn into alcoholics during this either. But I already wine? was. At wine? That absolutely. I mean, yes, that's important. Wine is breakfast. (laughs) I have a table. My kitchen table actually has a rack in the table that has, I don't know how many bottles stored in it. That's pretty fun. It is. It's awesome. It's the best table ever. Dog walking. There's another good reason. This is. Give me an address. I'll send you some locals. This is what. Oh, I don't need locals. I I have a, a local moonshine dealer right here in my neighborhood. I'll trade you wine for moonshine. <laughs> Dog walking. English language Italian news site, the local it, reported that some people were exhausting their pets during walks in efforts to stay outside. The site reported some people walking their four legged friends up to five times a day. Holy shit. Some local mayors have had it with people violating orders to stay inside. Some have complained of people walking their cats. I, I I totally see their point there. While one man claimed on his form that he was out feeding pigeons. Well, the pigeons got to eat. One mayor said he stopped a jogger with a visibly worn out dog. The guy said, I stopped him and said, look, this isn't a movie. You are not Will Smith and I am legend. Go home. Another said he heard rumors that people wanted to throw graduation parties. We will send the police over, he said, with flamethrowers. That's mm. what we're doing in Italy to break up the party. Flamethrowers. Um, here in New York, they're just fining him $1,000. So. Oh. 2000 Yeah, Yeah, that's right. We're moving up in the world. I forgot. I forgot it's going up. <laughs> yep, 2000 <laughs> for breaking the pause edict. I, uh, no politics. I will try. I'm sorry. So, Scott, do you have anything on uh, conspiracy theories? Um, like I said, everything coming up is goes back to the bat soup, and it goes back to 5G. Yes, it absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and agree. So, I, I'm torn. I have so many stories because, you know, Lunchbox, I was really worried that we weren't going to have much of a show if this shit kept up. Now, we're not in the same position as Sports Church, because there's no sports no. going on. Because so, <laughs> we get to do whatever we want to instead of just sports. Yeah, so like every week... You can in, do uh, the origami championships, they're all pay-per-view. Oh, wow. Did wow. you say origami championships? Wow, that's a lame joke. Yep, and they're <laughs> all pay-per-view. He, just, he threw that out. <laughs> Wee! Just, let's see where that goes. Oh my god, I can't even... No, but so every week in our in our in our VRS chat that we have, um, Mini Me and the other guys at Sports Church are constantly looking for now for material. To right. Us on Sports Church, and it's yeah, because a lot of these organizations are doing online terminate ter- long day. 
take tournaments, two. take two long, uh, you know, on online tournaments with their players. But Don't worry, Josh will fix it in post. Right. But I don't think I'm, shit in that, post. <laughs> that's only going to get you so far, right? Like, it's virtual. It's not the real thing. It's true. Uh, NBA is talking about having a horse tournament. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, let's enunciate. Did you say whores? Horse. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, a what? horse tournament. Everybody <laughs> on different, uh, different places. And they're going to play horse that way. Okay. Yeah, I'm almost to the point where I was going to offer to Sports Church to do Madden uh, simulation games, like simulate a whole season, and then just have them review the stats. And um, but I, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Like I think UNC should do paper football. Or me and Terrell can do... Mario Kart, and we could have the cast of Sports Church um, <laughs> be the commentator Absolutely. for it. The problem Absolutely. is, I need a I need a capture card to do it off do it off my Switch because they don't Switches are kind of assholes about streaming their stuff. So you have to you have to get kind of creative with it. So Terrell says we wa- we talked about how many grade schoolers we could beat up at the end of Sports Church yesterday. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how far they have stretched. <laughs> <laughs> Poor sports church. I know, womp, right? Womp. So, I mean, yeah. hey, we are getting close to the end of our show because we have we to are. sign off. We have to go back to the old VRS rules of we have to sign off a couple minutes early. There's really nobody behind us or ahead of us or to the side of us. There is nobody. Yeah, we, we, we own don't Monday night. Anybody behind us. I only have this behind me. <laughs> I've got this. Nothing Which else. I can't I'll live alone. I can't squeak it anymore. I was told by my wife that um um the cat uh, every time it goes off no matter where he's at in the house he actually uh-huh. starts breathing heavy and starts looking around like he's going to be attacked. So I'm not allowed to give maybe, my cat a small heart attack anymore. Maybe he's thinking about attacking. No, no, no. But he had terror in his eyes. So Oh. Well, that's not cool. Poor yeah. kitty. Poor kitty. Is this new cat? <clears throat> nope. Nope, it's old asshole cat. Old oh, asshole cat. That's his official name. So I sent you a recipe for that. I know you did. So did he... Does he have legit trauma? Poor kitty. I, I don't know. He just wants to be fed all the time. So he's probably thinking the chicken is a whole new pet. Well, it's possible, yeah. So, <clears throat> Scott, I want to thank you for coming on with us tonight. You know, it, a lot of people um, want to criticize or complain about the content of some of these shows. Not a lot of a lot of people step up and get behind the plate. So, um, ah, there you go, Sports Church. My little head nod to you guys. I don't give a shit. Yep. Pick a subject. I'll be in on it. Sweet. Uh, just, I might be playing it by ear, kind of like I was with the conspiracies. Cause like I said, everything is 5g and bat soup. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't give a shit. Oh, wait, of one, one conspiracy theory I did forget. And that actually, this seems the most viable. It is our pets conspiring against us to get us all to stay home. Cause we have not been paying attention to them. I am not going to disagree with that because yep. my little beagle, <laughs> oh my God, this dog. When my wife got this dog, she was six months pregnant. This dog was three weeks old. Mm-hmm. I worked in off shift. I fed this dog by hand and from Aww. a bottle, from a rag. And this dog is just bonded to me. I could put her in a BDU shirt pocket and she would hide. She was that small. Aww. Yeah, my wife gets so pissed when she cuddles up to me. That's your dog. Yeah, but my wife does not agree. And I have to give her credit. My wife is my little Cajun queen from the backwoods of Louisiana. I love her. I married way the hell up. And I will ever, forever admit that. 
but oh my god, this dog. But yeah, the the pets are not spreading coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, they are. They just want it. Tuffy wanted me home more. So so we have a follow on question for next week from Dean Cerny, and then we got to jump off here. What if they're distributing 5G through bats? That's what we have to find out for next week. <laughs> All right, Scott, since you're the guest, any final thoughts before we jump off here? Not that I can think of right now. Okay, Judy? Um, I do, actually. So look for the positive in the world. Um, I have had to take a step back from the news. Um, you know, I'm a news junkie and that's one reason I got started doing radio the way I do and and talking about things that are happening in the world in the news. (coughs) Um, but I had to take a step back from it because it's so fucking depressing, but there are people out there that are full of kindness and love and, and trying to help people, um, get through this. And that's what we need to keep focusing on and looking for because, the only way we're going to lift each other up is if we start working at it. Like each individual person, you need to start, you know, taking care of each other and lifting each other up and looking for the good stories and the good news. And let's start flooding our social media feeds with that kind of shit, because this, you know, it's one of the reasons that we do this show is to get people away from how, I mean, it's, this is very serious and it's very scary um, you know, it's a, it's a deadly virus and it has just put, taken this global economy to a screeching halt and hurt a lot of people. And that's a lot, that's a, a huge burden to carry. And like I mentioned before, nobody has coping skills for this. The, even the strongest of person is struggling right now because we're all isolated from each other. I live alone. This is fucking terrible. But finding the good out there, you know, talking to your friends that are upbeat and positive and fun and and encouraging each other and and encouraging your friends who feel like they're down. That's what we need to start focusing on because no one's going to get through this alone. Absolutely no one. So keep checking on each other. Keep taking care of each other. If you can't find the positive out there, be the positive. Be that be that guy that you want to talk to. Be that guy who you wish you could call that friend. And, you know, have that one person in your life that's constantly positive and looking for the best in life. You be that guy. So take care of each other. Actually, Judy, I I do have something. Um, Josh and I are both members of the Dwyer Veterans Peer Peer Group. If anybody out there is having a problem, send me a message. I will give you my cell number, my personal cell number. I don't care. I will send you a message every day. I don't care. If you're having a problem, that is the God's honest truth, too, because Scott has messaged me on Messenger and on text message every day since I talked about me struggling last week. Let me know. I don't care. I will talk to you. I don't care. I I get off at work at 3.30. I am still working. I'm lucky. I will call you if you need it. I don't yep. care. Let me know. Send me a message. I'll talk to you. Absolutely. All right, guys. It's the uh, the end of our show here. Thank you all for attending. Scott, thank you for being on. Um, Absolutely. Anytime. Be good, be, Even be if good. I am a little drunk. Shut up, Scott. Your time is up. Um, <laughs> your 15 be, minutes is over. Right, your 15 minutes is famous. Fuck you, done. Josh. Exactly. All right. Be good to one another. We'll see you all next week. Later. Love you.